so my name is Benit. I am a medical school at St. George's University School of Medicine in Grenada. I am going into my second year in just a couple of weeks, so I thought it would be maybe helpful for someone out there to be able to kind of um, hear from a current student about what year one looks like in terms of what the academic, um, I guess the academic aspect of it, aspect of it is, but also in terms of what worked and kind of just lifestyle habits that may make first year of medical school a little bit easier. It is very daunting, just medical school in itself, but also moving to a whole different country for a lot of us. So I hope that this video is helpful and provides some sort of insight and maybe comfort for incoming students and always my social media. Everything is always um, open for any questions or any conversation that anybody may have. I will link everything down below. So I wanted this video to kind of just cover term one so this will just an overview of what academically it would look like but also just things that I found to be helpful and that worked for me so I have notes on my iPad so if I'm just looking down at something that's what it is so I will start by kind of giving an overview of what term one looks like so in term one there's five modules and each module consists of small group labs lectures ultrasound um, so for the first module this is FTM 1 and FTM 2 so at the end of every module so like at the end of FTM 1 and then at the end of FTM 2 and so forth you have an exam and this covers everything from that module so FTM 1's exam will cover everything from FTM 1 and then FTM 2 FTM 2 and so forth so um, FTM foundations of medicine basically it entails and covers anything that you might need to just know moving forward so there's things from genetics to cells and tissues to um let me think to like translation translation transcription dna replication a lot of this is stuff that we've already seen we've probably studied it when we were writing our mcat um so it's kind of just to give us a brief overview of everything that we might need to know moving forward and then after this we have msk so msk is a muscle skeletal system so this covers muscles and nerves and their functions and like anything, any disease that's associated with this. And then this is, I believe, the longest module of um, of term one. And for this, I would really advise doing grace questions. They are um, assigned to us by the school and they are very helpful. And I'd advise to at least get two to three passes of them. I know that seems like a lot, but it's very helpful to be able to see how things can be asked in an exam. And then, then one after this, we have CPR, which is cardio, pulmonary, and renal. And again, CPR 1 and CPR 2. So CPR 1 focuses on any, everything related to the heart. So histology, anatomy, physiology, some brief pharmacology, um, and then any diseases that might be related to this. And same thing for CPR 2. However, CPR 2 focuses more on... Um, the pulmonary and renal aspect. So again, anatomy, physio, pharmacology, some like very brief pharmacology, histo, and there's a decent amount of math that's associated with this, but it's nothing that's too difficult. Um, and on the exams, you do get a calculator and a whiteboard to like help you kind of figure everything out. Um, so like I mentioned, every module has lectures, small groups, um, ultrasounds, anatomy labs, and sim labs and they're all very helpful it's kind of just an opportunity for us students to see the material that we've learned in lecture in a different way so it might it can help like for some of us if we're like visual learners like it might be more helpful to see something in like anatomy lab but then if you're like an audio listener like or an audio learner sorry lectures are really helpful so it's just a good way for everyone for us students to see everything in a different way and so you have module exams and then at the end of the term so in december for me or whatever the last month is for you of that term um you would have an anatomy exam and this is basically just 25 multiple choice questions covering things that we've seen in lab throughout the term and they're usually only first order or second order questions so it's nothing that's impossible or anything that's too difficult i would say compared to other things that you will be doing in medical school and then you have an ospi exam so this is I would say like the best way for me to describe it is like a practical exam so you go in and there's five different stations and for each station there's a standardized patient and 
on the door there's a vignette with a scenario and basically you're going into this room and basically in this room you're going to do whichever exam or test that you think is the best for that patient and all of these tests and exams are things that we have learned in small group and we are provided with rubrics that like break down exactly how we're marked so when practicing for this exam i found it to be very beneficial to get it with like maybe two friends of mine and just like go through and practice on each other and follow this rubric because this rubric is how you are marked so that is kind of like a recap of everything in terms of tests and exams um for term one and so for study tips so i know everybody says this but do your best to not fall behind obviously you're gonna have a day where you do fall behind and it's okay but just try your best to not fall behind because there's a lot that we are expected to like review every single day so sometimes if you fall behind it's just it's very stressful to try to catch up nothing that's impossible but just like it's hard it's stressful and you do eventually get the hang of medical school stress but at first when you fall behind it's just a different type of stress but again it's okay everyone's been there i've been there my friends have been there you will get through it um and one thing that really worked for me was schedules so i had a weekly planner and i would write down on sunday kind of what i wanted to get done for every day so if there was like certain number of dlas that we were given for that day or the lectures and i kind of wrote all of this down before going into the week and this is all stuff that's going to be on sakai so you know going into the week what dlas you have when what lectures you have when when you have small groups and so it's just a very good way to kind of plan it out because say for instance you have no dlas on a tuesday but then you have like five dlas on a wednesday maybe you could do some of those dlas on tuesday just to help your workload on wednesday but again different things work for different people so that's just something that i found to work for me and i tried to le like limit it to like three to five but again this is very hard because every day is different but just something that you find is a doable amount for you so something that you can plan in advance and something that's doable and also something that i tried my very best to do was do something fun every day for myself it doesn't have to be anything that's crazy but maybe like go to the gym or call my parents or something that just kind of makes you feel like a human because sometimes in medical school you're so go 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 that it can feel like that's all your life is and although a lot of your time is spent in medical school it is very important to try to find some sort of balance like i had friends who like doing yoga or i had friends that like going out for dinner with their friends like it can be an hour thing it doesn't need to be anything that's crazy but just do your best to be intentional and try to take some time out in a day for yourself um let's see what else and sleep that was one thing that i did not give up i aimed for eight hours and it was a consistent sleep schedule so it'd be like 10 p.m i was asleep and i was up at 6 a.m every day and this is very helpful i think it did wonders for my mental health just to know that i was going to be getting sleep and just with the stress of everything i believe it's really important to sleep and i know some of my friends could survive on six hours of sleep but that's just not something that I could do so it's just a matter of finding out what works for you and that's something that you're going to notice a lot in medical school is everyone is so different so certain study resources may work for certain people but that doesn't mean that they're going to work for you and that's not that's okay it's just a matter of finding what works for you so I would really advise just if sleep is something that you need and you know that you cannot survive with less than eight hours of sleep please don't sacrifice that like there's other ways that you could adjust your schedule to make sure you're able to fit everything in without sacrificing sleep. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and also, so we had these programs called AEP and OPLGs. And this was just where you could like sign up for different topics that you needed a little bit more help on and get more help for those. And I would say that it's really good to like take part in these and take advantage of these because they are very helpful and like you're able to discuss with your peers and with an upper termer of just things that you're having difficult with and difficulty with and sometimes that is very like it's necessary and I know sometimes like it's hard to ask for help and stuff like that but please do please take take advantage of these resources they're there for a reason um very helpful and so let's see what else so in terms of how I studied so I my thing was i really liked one pagers so i after every lectures i would try to summarize everything 
into one page on my iPad. So I would write out notes. I used Good Notes. Um, that's just what I work. That's just what worked for me and what I liked. And I would write out what I thought were to be like the most important things from that lecture. And I would highlight. I color coded. I had like a system. Like headings were in a certain color. Clinical correlates were in a certain color. And so for the first, I want to say FTM one, FTM two, and MSK. I my clinical correlates were kind of all over the place they were always just like in my notes somewhere but then when CPR started I developed this system where I would I had a Google Docs going and I would always list my clinical correlates that were like in the lecture notes and then my next column I did their description or just kind of a summary of what it was and then my last column was clinical symptoms or like clinical manifestations and I thought that this was really helpful because I'm a very visual learner but I need everything to be organized so when I could see all of this like in a chart it just helped me like learn it better and honestly whenever I could use a table I made a table so I would see if I could like summarize those lecture notes that lecture into a table and if I could my post read was making this table but if I couldn't because sometimes it's more conceptual or like math you can't necessarily make into a table then for things like that I would do my one page summary sheets um let's see what else I have written down here um, oh, and then also practice questions, practice questions, practice questions. This is something that you're going to hear a lot in medical school. I didn't understand how practice questions were supposed to be helpful because if I didn't know the material, how can I like do practice questions? But use practice questions to learn. So they help you kind of figure out what's important because honestly, with everything that you're going to be taught, it's very difficult to know every little detail so it's important to do practice questions because it helps you narrow down on what's important and what you need to know that's not to say that you don't need to know what's in the lecture notes but use practice questions to help you figure out what's important and like kind of what to be a like foundation of knowledge on so for instance if there's a question and it's multiple choice a b c and d and the correct answer is c still review why a b and d are correct are incorrect and like go over those topics and that way you're covering a lot more than just simply writing and reading it like that's very passive and all like try to do active recall and active learning in medical school um and then another thing i really use it's this website it's this online subscription website called med school boot camp and i started using this in when cpr1 started and it's a very 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 good resource they have short videos on various topics of things that you've learned and they do a very good job of explaining it in simpler terms and there's a lot of resources out there so find stuff that works for you but like med school boot camp worked wonders for me I still use it to this day it does a very good job of helping you understand whatever that topic is but it also often has mnemonics and stuff that help you memorize things and just like keep them in your brain because there's a lot that you're gonna learn and you're gonna be like oh my god like how will I remember this but those mnemonics and sometimes all these different resources whichever one works for you like hearing it from different ways or learning it different ways it's very helpful and helps it stay in your brain um and last thing medical school I th I found to be like I went through a lot of imposter syndrome term one and I know a lot of my friends did too and this is a very normal feeling but just always keep in mind and always remember that you deserve to be in medical school you are so capable you are so intelligent and any little hardship that you have big or small do not let it bring you down and do not let it define who you think you are as a person because you deserve to be in medical school school you work your butt off to be there so you deserve to be there and do not let anything sway you from your end goal of becoming a physician because you will make a great physician